Okay, so today we are doing a review for The Shadow Rising, book four in the Wheel of Time series. I am going to do my best to give my spoiler, this is going to be a spoiler, spoiler reactions and thoughts. I just finished this book yesterday and I'm going to do my best to talk it through. Um, I don't have a ton of time to do this review. This could so much happened in this book. This is like a 920 page book in this giant edition um, of, of the paperback. And so much happened that I could, I could probably do an hour long review talking about this, but I just legitimately don't have time to do it because I have a lot of work to do today. So sorry if this is a little bit messy. These are my initial thoughts, not really collected or scripted out very much. So sorry if I got some stuff wrong. Sorry if I leave some stuff out. Uh, but here we go, let's talk. Okay, I'm going to, I think I'm gonna first hit on some major things that happened that I really liked or wanted to talk about a little bit and then we're going to talk a little bit about the character development or digression in some cases uh, throughout, this, throughout this book. This giant book where so much happened, I don't even know how to review it. So this book started off with Min, which I was actually really excited about because Min is a character that is really, really interesting that I have been very excited to spend more time with. And this book teased me by starting off with her and making me think that she was finally going to be more of a key player. But basically she has these visions, um, noticing that all these Aes Sedai are going to die in a brutal and bloody way. She runs to tell the Amarlin and the Am Amarlin says, yeah, I know you're useless. From there, Elida is maybe how you pronounce that name, uh, basically says, I'm going to dethrone the Amarlin. And then she does. And then the Amarlin is gentled, which was insane. Did not see that coming at all. It was the Amarlin and a couple other people. Um, all of their abilities were stripped from them. And then Elida becomes the new Amarlin which is really bad. And Min rescues the Amarlin and the other people, as well as the, uh, la, la, what, what's his name? Logan. Logan. is that how you say his name? Logan. My memory card filled up, so sorry if the angle is different. Anyway, from there, everybody just starts getting attacked by whatever is around them. Rand is denying a young lady of some sexy times, and then his reflection starts trying to murder him. Um, Matt is playing cards, gambling, as he does, and then I think the cards start trying to kill him. That was a really long time ago. It feels like forever ago, the beginning of the book. And then with Perrin, I think his axe starts trying to kill him, and that kicks off a lot of drama between him and Fael. So Perrin and Fael were interesting characters uh, in this book. <laughs> Perrin has been my favorite character, um, I think since book two. Parent, maybe even since, I don't know, I don't remember. Um, he's been my favorite character for a long time. And in this book, that was only solidified. However, Fail has been a challenge. She was an interesting character to start. And then there was sort of this leap with them where like they hated each other, but also obviously had feelings for each other, but just didn't really want to admit to it all throughout book three. And then at the end of book three, Perrin sacrifices himself for her. And then at the beginning of book four, they're just together, uh, which was, a little bit jarring for me and then and then um they get to have some drama so i guess perrin perrin tries to save her from the axe that's trying to kill him um and they have a serious talk of like you need to trust me and let me handle things from there she then tries to go behind his back because he wants to go turn himself in and essentially he's going to be killed for turning himself in she doesn't like this so she's like I'm going and uh, he doesn't want that. And so she goes to Loyal and makes Loyal abandon Rand and go with her to Tan Chico, I think that place was called. Sorry, I don't really remember town super well. Tan Chico is, I think, where they're all trying to go, if, I can, if I'm remembering correctly. Anyway, so she kind of manipulates Loyal into taking her side, which poor little Loyal, I mean little, he's just trying to be everybody's friend and do what's right for everybody. And, and Fael is kind of being a brat. I mean, I get it. Here's the thing. So many characters in this series so far are really annoying, but their motivations always make sense. And Fael is one of those characters where I get it, I get why she feels the need 
to be such a brat and manipulate loyal and and like make basically make Perrin follow behind them because he won't do what she wants. Um, her motivation makes sense, but it just sucks that loyal got kind of stuck in the middle of it. I feel the same about Nynaeve. Nynaeve drives me nuts at the moment. I used to love her. I loved her in book one, but pretty much since book one, I kind of can't stand her. Um, she's, Nynaeve is also such a brat. Like that scene where they were traveling and um, they ordered the guy who's, who's, um, it, sorry, I didn't take notes while I was reading this. The guy who's driving their like their carriage thing, she orders him to move fast and then she's mad at him for moving too fast and for it being a bumpy road. And she's mad that like her butt hurts and she's been traveling for too long. And so she snaps at him and she's super rude. And then I think it's a great, no, it's Elaine. Elaine. I think it's Elaine that um, gives him extra money and she's like, you didn't go too fast. The roads were bumpy. You did as we were told. And you know, like it's such a, it's, it was such a minor scene, but I just like so many things like that come up with Nynaeve where it's like, why are you so like, he's just doing his job. He's just a workman. And you're like snapping at him because your circumstances suck. And I get it because your circumstances do suck. And pretty much everybody in this book Everybody's circumstances circumstances suck, and none of them want to be in the positions that they're in, but because they're either the Dragon Reborn or a Taviran or someone connected to those things, they're forced to do a bunch of stuff they don't want to do. So all of their attitudes, when they're being snippy and annoying and resistant and difficult, it always makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like Jordan does a really good job of taking kids, young people, who have a terrible weight on their shoulder and really rotten circumstances and making them react really reasonably. And I like that. But the other part of me is constantly annoyed with these people <laughs> because they're responding to things in such bratty or whiny or whatever kinds of ways, but it's good because they're reacting like humans would react. They're not acting like heroes. They're acting like kids that are forced to be heroes. So it's good but it also doesn't make the read it's hard to explain. I'm not trying I'm not trying to say negative things about the book. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to say it's good that their reactions are so honest, but it also gives me honest reactions to these characters where I'm like, "Man, Nynaeve, you're such a brat." Or "Man, Fael, you're such a brat." Uh, but but I don't I don't hate them for being brats because it makes sense. I'm probably over explaining. Anyway, we're getting more of Lanfear in this book. Uh, we got more of her when she says, hi, I'm Celine, also known as Lanfear, which she kind of did at the end of book two, three, three, it was three. Three is the one where uh, Lanfear, where Celine is seducing Rand like over and over and over again. And Rand is like, you're beautiful. I love you. I'll channel. Wait a second. I shouldn't channel, right? That was book three. They're all starting to blend together for me uh, because so much happens. But anyway, it was kind of revealed that she was Lamphier at the end of book three, but then in book four, she comes along and she's like, just in case you missed it, yo, I'm Lamphier. Um, and then kind of gives some background and explains, I was in love with you in your past life, basically. And also I have some pretty bad agendas. So then the entire middle section of this book was so cool with, um, with the White Tower stuff. Um, I'm, I guess I'll just go through it really briefly because so much happened and I still feel like it's difficult to explain because I feel like I understood it as well as I could have, but I also don't think I'm really meant to understand everything that happened in the White Tower yet until things continue to unfold. So the guys meet these snake people who give them new prophecies and it doesn't go exactly the way the guys had hoped. They go through the Aeol Waste, through this portal stone. And then this Forsaken manipulates the women, some of the women, like, com does this compulsion on them where suddenly they're forced to have this loyalty to this Forsaken and, and give her all this information? Dude, that scene was the most horrifying thing I read in this book in my like for me it more than battle scenes or anything else that's going on but that scene when they were totally at her mercy and felt this this need this compulsion to give her everything that was so messed up I that oh so anyway then Perrin turns himself in finds out that his whole family is dead and that kind of begins 
uh, the next stage for Perrin. I really feel like Perrin was the one on Spotlight in, in this entire book, at least for me he was, because this is where he begins becoming like the, uh, what did they call him? Like Lord Perrin, King of the Wolves or something. And this is where he begins um, becoming that. And he, he and the others um, kind of create this caravan where they start hunting down Trollocs and going to the villages and convincing people to give up their homes and their livelihood to save their families. And a ton of battle sequences uh, where he has this rivalry between him and the White Cloaks. And Perrin's entire development in this book was just so cool to me. Anyway, then Rand and Matt go through this trial. Rand gets permission. Matt kind of weasels his way in a little bit. They go through this trial. Matt finds out this the true history, um, which is pretty devastating. From what I understand, it's sort of um, everything that people believe is basically wrong. It was it was a lot of information to take in, but it was this huge history that he kind of has to keep to himself from what I understand. And then Matt gets hanged instead of getting what he was supposed to get. Um, and then this bit was a little bit confusing to me, so maybe you guys can, can help me understand. But Matt gets hanged, and then Rand saves him and resuscitates him. And from his hanging, he is downloaded with all the information or or all the all the memories of like the greatest strategist of this world. So Matt kind of becomes like the best strategist for war. But I don't really understand why him getting hanged caused that download of information to come to him. I might have just missed something. There was so much going on um, at this section of the book that I really just like tried to keep my head around everything. So it's possible that I missed something. It's possible that I'm not supposed to know it yet. Y'all can explain it to me if I did miss something. And then the final battle happened, which that was incredible. Rand's battle with Lanfear. He learns how to skim, which was so cool. I really loved Rand's development in this book as well. I'm talking a lot about Perrin, but Rand's development in this book was awesome as well because up until this point, he's been exactly what Jordan said he wanted him to be, right? He was this, he was this country boy, this farm boy who uh, got this horrible responsibility on him where he is um, required to be the Dragon Reborn and, and doesn't have a choice in it. And, and he's sort of just not been happy about it. He's been whiny is maybe too harsh of a word to describe him, but he's just been really resistant. He's kind of hidden behind Moraine and others where he's sort of let everybody else. Rand has sort of let everyone drag him along at this point. Whatever people tell him to do, he does. That's why he was so easily influenced by Celine, or at least a large part of why he was. Um, and it just seems like it seems like Matt has been has been dragged along the story up to this point. But in this book, a shift happens where Rand really um, becomes powerful and is able to be a contender in these final battles where it's not like, I don't know, I feel like the last three books have been pretty repetitive with the way it's ended. I talked about that in my last review. And then in book four, Rand really becomes his own, learns, uh, gains these new abilities and in, He's, he's now, I don't know, just so powerful in and of his own right. But I kind of love how long it's taken Rand. I, I have really just, I felt nothing for Rand up to this point. He's, he's been, somebody asked me recently in one of my videos, how do you feel about Rand? And I just responded, I nothing Rand. Because that's how I felt up this point. I, I nothing him. He, he's just been a character. He's not been full of uh, an extreme amount of, of personality. He's been very loyal to his friends, but he's also been super unstable, which has actually been really interesting. He, he really goes to like really dark places, super unstable, losing his mind. And then he's a really good friend again. And he's um, trying to do what's best, but resisting everything. And then he goes unstable again, which I've actually loved about Rand. Um, but he still hasn't won me over. But this book, he's, he's starting to win me over. He's starting to come into his own and become a character that, that, that holds his own in a fight. And, 
And I like how long it's taken him to get there. I like that there wasn't this big training montage and then and then he's a great fighter and he can take down the best. Like, he's still not the best, but um, he's just been a really interesting character to follow. Oh, I didn't even mention that, that um, Perrin and Fayil got married in this book. Dude, first of all, my, my baby Perrin, who I've known since he was a child, it feels like, um, has grown up so much, and the fact that he's a married man now, I just, it's crazy how much these characters have grown and changed. But that marriage man, I don't even know what to do, because it was such a weird, it was, once again, parents trying to save Fael, trying to get her out of danger so that he can just take everybody down and know that she's safe. And so he's like, hey, go on this mission, get out of here, and then come back. And everybody knows he's just trying to get rid of her. She knows it too. So she's like, okay, I'll do it if you'll marry me. Right now, right here, do it. And <laughs> it was such a weird, he's, he agrees to it. It's such a weird thing, because I know they love each other, but it was such a weird manipulation where he's trying to get rid of her, and she's like, fine, I'll leave if you marry me. And then, they, and then they, he agrees, and then she kind of still doesn't do what he asked because she finds a loophole, which is great. I loved that whole sequence was hilarious, but also so weird. Matt, a lot of people told me that this would be the, the book where Matt wins my love. And I don't dislike Matt. Matt's had a really interesting journey too, where he's also, uh, was it book two, I think, where he was insane pretty much the whole time because he had that dagger and Rand was carrying him on his shoulders basically throughout the entire thing. Like Rand was the Sam Wise and, and Matt was the Frodo. Um, and then as soon as Matt was okay, he was like, ooh, I don't really wanna be around you, Rand, cause you're a little bit unstable, <laughs> Um and then, and then in book three, Matt was better, uh, but still, I don't know. And then book four as well, he's funny. He's a funny character, but uh, I still don't really, I haven't been won over to him yet. At least not to the point that everybody is convinced he'll win me over. It's still Perrin, and people keep telling me Perrin's so boring, but I'm not seeing that. Um, as, far as, as far as the women, I already kind of mentioned Nynaeve is just continuing to fall in the ranks for me. Egwene, I felt, I felt like she just wasn't in this book. She was there in the beginning when Elaine, um, I don't know if that was weird too, when Egwene decided that she doesn't love Rand anymore and so she does this setup with, Egwene decides she doesn't love Rand and so she does a setup with Elaine and essentially passes her off and she's like, Rand, I don't love you, here's, Egwene, uh, here's Elaine. And then Elaine says, hi, I'm your new lady. And Rand is, is kind of like, okay, but also why is everyone deciding who I'm with but me? Which is sort of a theme throughout the entire book. Random characters keep coming up to Rand and saying, Elaine is the one, she's your lady. And Rand's like, <sighs> um, Avienda, I think is how you say her name, is a character that I find very, very interesting. And I am excited to get more from. Um, I really like her relationship with Egwene. I'm constantly afraid I'm gonna say the wrong name because these names are so similar. Anyway, I really liked their friendship a lot and um, her whole role in the end. I'm really excited to see more from her in book five. I hope we get to see more of her in book five. I really want more of, of Min in book five. And Lan, Lan, like Lan was set up so interestingly in book one and then since then he's kind of also just been drug along by the women in the book and he'll have these one-liners for Nynaeve where he proclaims his love to her and Nynaeve is kind of brushing him off but we know Nynaeve loves him and so I think I'm waiting for that to come to a head I'm waiting for those two to get together and but I want more of Lan I really hope we get more of him because he was set up to be such a cool character and he really just isn't getting any page time um, so more of Lan more of Min more of uh, Avienda is maybe how you say her name because those are characters that I, I don't really think well I mean Avienda she's she's new isn't she um, these characters just didn't really get anything out of this book uh, it didn't seem like but I am really glad that Rand got some spotlight and got a lot of development. Matt is still developing, and what happened with him at the end, with the hang in the middle, with him in the with the hanging and everything. I'm very excited to see what happens next with his arc. Perrin is awesome. He was 
definitely a hero of this book. Um, I want more of Loyal too. I want more out of Loyal. Loyal's been a really interesting character and he's been one of my top characters since we met him. Uh, but at this point he's kind of not doing anything so I would really like to get more out of him and explore his character further, give him more depth. Um, I know he's writing uh, that book, The Dragon Reborn I think is what it's called. And um, I, I don't know, I just want more out of him. I know that this was a really messy review. Truly, I try to do these reviews fairly recently after I read them because first of all, there's so much is happening, especially in book four. So much happened in book four that it would be impossible for me to properly talk about the entire book. But also so much happened that I feel like I'm afraid that if I wait too long to do the reviews that I'm going to, things are going to start getting fuzzy or start blurring together. The books are starting to blur together. I'm having trouble remembering what happened in each isolated book where they're all just kind of becoming one story, which is great, but not great for reviews. Um, so I want to do these immediately after reading, but also so much happened in this book that my brain hasn't even really processed at all. But feel free to chat with me more about anything that I mentioned in this review or things that I wasn't able to get to in this review and you want to talk about more. Um, thanks for sticking with me as I journey the series. I know that this is a lot of people's favorite series and seeing my initial reactions has been fun for a lot of you. It's been frustrating for some of you because I haven't read the book dozens of times so I don't understand everything that's happening and some of you really hate that. But I really appreciate um, how much this series, how much you guys have been hanging out with me as I, as I read the series and excited to get my initial reactions and thoughts and explain the things that I'm, that I'm not fully um, understanding or missing. But this series has been a blast to read. It's been really overwhelming to read, especially book four got so much bigger with, with all the culture development with the Aiel and the the one maybe is what that's called. There was so much culture development in this in this book and so much information given the characters, holy cow, the characters were expanded, the world was expanded, so much more happened in this book and this is really a series that I feel like I'm not going to be able to fully appreciate until my second read through until I get the whole overarching plot and then all these details that are cram packed into it I can appreciate more because I'm not trying to figure out the story and draw connections and keep up with all the characters. I know the characters, I know the story, and so the details can really shine. Um, so I really feel like this is a book that, like these books I'm enjoying, but I'm also not worrying about all the small details as much because I'm at this point I'm just trying to enjoy the overarching story. And then whenever I make my way through it again, I think is when I can start appreciating all that Jordan truly put into them. But I am really, really enjoying as I'm reading through them. I'm really enjoying interacting with you guys and talking to you guys about it as I go along. I'm enjoying how much most of you guys are enjoying me going through it and chatting with it, so chatting with you about it. So anyway, that's my review for book four, The Shadow Rising. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll chat with you guys soon and in the comments.